Hi third grade. Today we are going to continue our exploration of how to make something look three-dimensional even though we're on a two-dimensional surface. So we've been talking a lot about this this year. I spend a lot of time with my third graders trying to explain the idea of form, something that has a three-dimensional shape. And so I was thinking about how we have entered the winter season. There are days that are going to look very, very, very snowy. Um, there's gonna be some days maybe you're just super cold. And we're gonna pretend that we're gonna lock that scene in a bottle. We wanna have that image of a winter wonderland in a bottle. So I got this idea because I thought when we go to the beach, we will take a, a glass jar or a bottle, we'll put some of the beach sand in it and we take it home kind of as a souvenir. So I want you to imagine that we are going to have a bottle and our message inside of it is going to be of our winter wonderland. So if I were to have a bottle, I'd have a cork in it, make sure nothing could fall out of it. So today, continuing with that three-dimensional idea, that's what we're going to do today. So I have a piece of drawing paper it is the tall way. If you feel more comfortable using a pencil first, that's fine. I'm gonna show you with a Sharpie. And if you notice, I am using a Sharpie pen. So it has a very, very fine tip because I want this drawing to be very delicate. I want my lines to look very, very um, thin, especially thinking about something that's glass. We know that glass is fragile. We don't wanna drop it. So I think that tip of my, my Sharpie is a nice one too, to get that idea. All right, so today we're gonna to talk a lot about curved lines. When I say curved, it's gonna almost make you think of a smile line, not a big smile, but a gentle smile. Okay, almost like a little smirk. So on the top of my paper, I'm going to actually begin with the top of my cork. So a cork is cylinder in shape, but it does taper. Taper means it does angle down together. So I'm gonna draw two lines to show the sides of that cork and I'm going to connect it. So if you notice this gentle smile and this one are very similar. All right, so my cork is going to be pushed in the top of a bottle. So I'm going to now just add the sides where this is going to look like that cork is in something. All right, and I'm going to repeat that again to give it some depth. Um, and also to give it some dimension because glass is a little bit thicker. You can actually see it's not paper, like it's not thin like a paper. There is some depth to it, just like my paint cup here that I have, all right? There's some thickness to that plastic. All right, so let's draw the sides down, all right? And I'm gonna do another smaller lip just for some decoration and then I'm going to draw the sides of my bottle. Think of that word symmetrical, the same on both sides, All right? The same on both sides. Now I'm gonna take this side and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to take this side and do the same thing. Now, if your lines are a little bit different, I don't want you to be worried, okay? Because a drawing, especially an ink drawing that we're doing right now, we're not measuring, we're doing this by hand. All right, now I'm going to come to the bottom and this curved line and this curved line, I'm going to repeat it and connect my bottle. All right, so those simple things make your bottle look rounded. Now, let's go in and add a few details. So my cork is in here and I'm going to extend my cork on the other side of that lip and round it again, just so it looks like it's a see-through container. Other things I'm thinking about is I'm going to do a very light outline around. I'm going very, very close, just to give the idea of the thickness of the glass. Notice I'm going right along the edge. I can even come on the bottom and add a little detail. All right, this is known as a contour line where you're thinking about just the outer edges and not worrying about all the little highlights and flecks that you would find in there. All right, so a winter wonderland. I want you to imagine that you are out on a hike 
the sun has just set, the moon is glowing in the sky. We're not going to add any color today. Today I want you to imagine if you had a little cabin in the woods, what would it look like? And so on your paper, I want you to begin with a little tiny cabin. So I'm going to think about my little cabin I'm gonna put some texture lines in here. When I say texture lines, it's just going to give it some detail that would give the idea that there's some texture. And on the side of my little cabin is another little house, or another room, I should say, not a house. to now make a sidewalk so when things are further away they get more narrow all right so I'm going to think about my path being wider and then getting narrower to the door so it's narrow and then it gets more wide all right so there's my little cabin I have the road now I need to make what's called the horizon so the horizon is where the land and the sky meet so this, in my mind, is going to be snow. This up here is going to be the sky. But if I were in the woods, in this open land, there might be some trees. And what kind of trees do we think of in the winter? Evergreens. Now I want you to think of this idea of when things are closer to us, they're going to be much bigger. If things are further from us, they're going to appear much smaller. So I am taking my Sharpie, and if you're noticing, I'm starting at the top, and I'm making small little strokes with my pen to give that tree a little bit of texture. And you can always go in and add more. Okay, and you can see I'm putting some trees further in the back. And I am going to spend a little time in these trees to add some wispy branches here, but making them a little darker. Like this is pretty light. I want my trees to look like a silhouette. A silhouette is an image that appears black against the back or against like a bright background. So we were talking in the beginning, I said, I want you to imagine a moon shining bright, almost like that Northern light idea. And obviously we're all gonna have a different image of what the woods might look like. Or your little cabin. So today's all about the drawing. Next time, we are going to add a little bit of color with our watercolors for that, that snowy, sparkling sky. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. So have fun with this. I want you to um, use your imagination. I'd even turn on a little music that makes you think of like the winter time. Think of different sounds that you would hear in the winter. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty confident. Another idea, like uh, this is obviously you can choose. 
maybe in the foreground. The foreground is the front. Maybe there's gonna be a little campfire. Okay, it's just another little component. All right, so this is something for you to have fun with. The whole idea is to think about that, that little bottle here. You can create lines to represent the snow. All right, so nice little pen and ink drawing. All right, hopefully you can see that my camera there. All right, so have fun with this. And like I said, next time we meet, we're gonna be adding that moonlight sky in the background and we'll do something fun with our bottle. All right, boys and girls, have a wonderful day. Be creative, have fun with this, practice, and we will meet again very, very soon. All right, bye-bye.